Okay, one more case uh, is uh, O.J. Simpson case. It's a court case from the uh, uh, from the nineties. Uh, O.J. was a football player who was accused of murdering his wife Nicole Brown Simpson and his friend uh, Ron Goldman. And in the nineties, it was uh, the case that dominated uh, TV networks, and uh, he was uh, let free. And we're going to talk about some probabilities involved in this case. So again, we have probability of the evidence, DNA evidence in the case of O.J. Simpson. Um, and uh, the evidence comes uh, in the form of a likelihood. So we have probability of evidence given that uh, O.J. Simpson is guilty. Uh, and what we're really interested in probability that he is guilty given the evidence. And prosecutor's fallacy again is confusing those two things, assuming they are equal. Um, and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to calculate the odds ratios, uh, ratio of innocent uh, to guilty, given the evidence. Uh, so this is our uh, posterior odds, posterior odds, given, uh, given, the, uh, given the evidence, though, the background information. All right. Um, okay. So, so here are the notations. Uh, suppose that uh, you're a juror in a murder case um, and uh, husband is accused of healing his wife. So this is O.J. Simpson case. And we know one thing about uh, O.J. Simpson that uh, he battered his wife. Uh, there was a police uh, r r uh, case uh, from the 80s uh, where uh, it was recorded that he was beating his wife. So, so here a few variables that we're going to work with. Uh, first variable, G, uh, guilty, not guilty. Uh, M, uh, wife uh, is murdered, and we'll see why this is important. And uh, B, husband is known to uh, better uh, his wife. Here are a few facts uh, that we're going to use uh, to calculate the probabilities. Uh, only one-tenth of one percent of husbands who better their wives actually murder them. So in other words... Uh, probability of murdering the wife, given that uh, husband uh, is a better, is one tenth of one percent. So it's one divided by one thousand. All right. And um, conditional eventually murdering wife, uh, there is one in ten chance it happens in a given year. But for this specific year, for 1994, when this case uh, happened, when the murder happened, uh, five thousand women were murdered. And uh, 1,500 of them were murdered by their husband. And let's say we're talking about the United States here, overall country numbers. And let's say the population of women in the United States in 1994 was uh, 100 million. So it means that 3,500 out of 100 million people were murdered by uh, somebody else, not by their husband. Meaning that if we know that uh, husband is innocent, then uh, the probability of murder is 3500 divided by 10 to the power 8. So even if your husband is innocent, you still have a chance to be murdered by somebody else. And we also will need this probability of uh, being murdered given your husband is better and he is innocent. And we're just going to take it equal to the probability of uh, murdering given that person is innocent. Okay. So, um, again, we're going to calculate the posterior odds here, and uh, we will see that uh, prosecutor's policy plays uh, a negative role if, if prosecutor assumes that uh, likelihood equal to the posterior probability of guilty. That's, that's a big mistake. Those things are far away from each other. So let's, uh, let's write down the probabilities that we have. Uh, we have probability of uh, being murdered given uh, guilty, and the better it's uh, one, of course, if we know that person is guilty, and then wife uh, has been murdered. And then probability of being murdered uh, given that husband is innocent and he's a better is one over uh, 30,000. And uh, probability of uh, being guilty given he is a uh, better is one in thousand. So one, remember one of every thousand uh, husbands who be their wives eventually murder them. Uh, so we are going to calculate the uh, posterior uh, odds given that the person is their wife better. And it's, so you remember this number is one divided by one thousand. And of course, uh, probability of innocent given better is uh, 999 divided by 
1000. So if you calculate it out, you have one divided by 199. So person is, given that person is better, the odds is one to 199 uh, to, uh, that he kills his wife. And now we're going to calculate the posterior odds, probability of um, uh, guilty given the murder and the better, divided by probability of innocent given murder and better. And you remember the posterior odds are just uh, probability of um, murder uh, given that he is guilty and he is better. So the prior odds or the likelihood murder given that He's innocent and he's a better um, times the uh, prior odds. Okay, so we have uh, all of the numbers that we have here. We need, we have this one, this one, and we have this ratio. And if you plug in this, uh, you happen to have uh, this uh, ratio to be at around 30. So the probability of guilty, given that person murdered uh, his wife and he is known to be the better, is uh, 30 divided by 31. So we just calculate the odds uh, to the probability. So this happens to be around uh, 97%. And of course, uh, the uh, fallacy is to assume that uh, probability that uh, he is guilty given that he is better is equals to probability that he is guilty given he is better and the wife already murdered. And when the defense actually stated, uh, tried to, to make a statement in, in press, they, they said the few, following thing, fewer than one in 2,000 of betters go on to murder their wives. However, that's not what we're interested in. We're not interested in the probability uh, of uh, him being guilty uh, given that he was just the better. Uh, we're actually interested in the probability given he is guilty, given he is better and the wife already murdered. So when you add this additional piece of information that the wife already has been murdered, then the probability of course changes. And if we plug in uh, the, their number into the calculation, we still have very high uh, ratio of, we have 95% chance that OJ Simpson is um, actually guilty. So they were trying to make a statement that was incorrect. Um, they were trying to present uh, this piece of information as, as the piece that needs to be used while uh, this one needs to be used. And probability of this one is much higher than the probability of this one. So another fallacy that we're going to talk about is, is called Bayes rate fallacy. Um, and it comes when we ignore uh, basically baseline rate of, of an event. So this happens when we ignore the prior, which we'll call also base rate. And here's an example of this fallacy. Let's say we have a witness uh, who makes the following claim, witness of an accident. And the claim is that um, I'm 80% certain, 80 certain I saw a checker uh, taxi in the accident. And we're going to use C for the fact that the taxi had checkers. And E we're going to denote uh, for the fact that he saw or he, he thought he saw that. And what he really, he really he, he, what he says is that given that uh, the tax actually had checkers given C the fact that he saw it, uh, those checkers, but the so probability of him seeing it is the evidence mean that he saw tax with checkers is, uh, 80%. But what we're really interested, we're really interested is what's the probability that the car involved in the accident actually had checkers given what the witness has to say. And the typical fallacy is to equate those things. So assuming that, ah, so he says he's 80% sure that it was tax with checkers means that 80% uh, chance that the tax that was involved in the accident had actually checkers. However, of course, as we probably have enough of intuition now to say that those things are not equal. And if we want to calculate the probability that taxi had checkers, we have to use the base rule. So we have to calculate, it's a, 
uh, product of the likelihood given the prior and then we have a total likelihood or total probability of uh, of the evidence and uh, so ignoring these pieces what really base fallacy is and in this case we assume it's 0 0.2 so really there are not that many taxes that have checkers in town there are only 20 percent of them and when uh, you take this piece of information into account and you combine with evidence then you actually have 50 percent chance so it's only really 50 50 percent bad that the uh, taxi that was involved in the accident had checkers updating fallacies is a fallacy when uh, people don't apply base rule often enough meaning that a new piece of evidence comes and people just don't recalculate their uh, posterior probabilities uh, so people uh, prefer status quo uh, even in the uh, presence of new evidence and this is a phenomenon that was studied by economist uh, Wards Edwards in the 60s he published a whole book on this topic and um, usually when people have a small uh, small sample size um, they they, they, they uh, so they, they might not update their probabilities fast enough all the base rule allows you to do that base rule can update your probabilities with one piece of information with one evidence and let, let's look at an example you have uh, two players and one player wins with 70 percent chance and another player wins with 30 percent chance and uh, you observe uh, one of them playing you don't know which one is playing and uh, you observe that um, one of them uh, wins uh, three times out of four so and you really need to know who is that person who wins three times out of four so um, we want to know the probability that we are dealing that player a is the 70 percent winner uh, given our evidence and evidence is that the player won uh, three out of four and uh, if we apply the base rule to update um, we're going to have probability of evidence given that he is 70 percent winner times the prior probability uh, divided by the total probability of this evidence and so what's the probability that um, if, given that it's a 70 percent player what are the chances that he wins uh, three out of time so essentially it's a Bernoulli distribution right so you want to know uh, Bernoulli distribution and you know you won uh, three times so so the, the distribution is your n equals to four so there were four attempts and the probability of win is 0 0.7 and you want uh, to know what's the probability of x uh, if it follows this Bernoulli distribution so we can uh, calculate it uh, we can calculate it in r so let's open r so we have uh, d uh, binomial and our x is uh, we have three successful outcomes and there are four trials and 70 percent chance so we have uh, 0 0.41 so this one is 0 0.41 and our prior assumption is 50 50 so we don't have any good any better guess than that so 0 0.41 and then at the bottom we want to calculate p of e so it's 0 0.41 times 0 0.5 and then uh, density of the Bernoulli function uh, was the probability of observing three successes uh, if we do n trials and the uh, probability of a success is 0 0.3 so what's the probability of observing that it's uh, and also divided times 0 0.5 so let us calculate the second number uh, 0 0.3 here so we get uh, seven and a half percent seven and a half percent so on the top we have roughly 0 0.2 uh, 0 0.2 plus uh, 0.035 something like that right so what we have is uh, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2 plus 0 0.035 So we get roughly 85%, so approximately 
85%. So we took a new piece of evidence that uh, person won three games out of four, and then we can use this piece of evidence to update the probability to 85%.